Welcome to Marketing Monday on Halloween, Spooky Edition. I'm the Marketing Cowboy. Yeah! And we got some wins and fails for you today, starting with the biggest win of all, a win for idiots that have more money than sense, a fragile ego, <laughs> and a desperate need to look cool. Because you can now buy verification on Twitter for $20. <laughs> Elon Musk has announced a $20 per month verification charge. This is part of Elon Musk's plan to turn Twitter profitable. More than Netflix, significantly more than Netflix. We talked about this in my previous Elon video, how subscription services like this need to give a lot of value to be worth it. This seems questionable. <laughs> I'm counting it as a win because some idiots will buy it. But let's do the math real quick, if you don't mind. Currently, there are about 400,000 verified users on Twitter. So let's assume that every single one of them chooses to pay this amount. So 400,000 times 20, $8 million times 12. That is $96 million a year. That is roughly half of what Twitter was already losing. <laughs> So they would still be losing money, assuming every single blue check pays the full fee. They would still be losing money. And that does not even cover the interest payments on the debt that Elon Musk has now put on Twitter's books. So the $12 billion in debt has roughly a $1 billion a year interest payment. This is not gonna be a one-stop band-aid, but it is the beginning, I suppose, of a way to try to monetize it. The thing is, the $20 price point is so high as if he's a person that spent way too much on something and wants to try and get some of that money back quickly. <laughs> That's what it seems like to me. Now, this is a list of wins, not just fails. Wins. He is not doing just that. Okay, we're going to do a quick, quick, quick deep dive on all the things Elon Musk has done in the three days since he's taken over Twitter. Number two, resurrect Vine. He tweeted, bring back Vine, Y or N. And it wasn't even that much of a stomp. <laughs> I thought, interesting plan. Vine is very much beloved. It has a sort of a cult nostalgia and memory among a certain class of people that were around for it. That being said, I don't want to be a Debbie Downer here. TikTok has taken everything from Vine. <laughs> Tick, there's not, there's not like any secret shit that Vine had that TikTok doesn't now have. At the time, Vine was ahead because TikTok didn't exist. And had Vine continued uh, and they continue to support it, it would have been, I think, very successful. That being said, this is not an incredibly dumb idea for one reason. As tensions between the United States and China continue to grow, there will become a time where there's more and more calls for the government to regulate or force a spinoff or force a, a shutdown of TikTok. That is actually something that is realistically going to happen. And in that case, having a homegrown American competitor to TikTok is not a bad idea. So this is the one idea so far that I think has some potential. Although I think at launch, I just don't see how it gets traction. Third thing Elon Musk has been doing is firing. Most of these firings are extremely expensive. He's got a plan for that. He's not going to pay them. That's his plan. He is firing them for cause. Now, if you read their contracts, if they're fired for cause, they can't get their generous severance packages, which sounds like, oh my God, what a genius. He has bought Twitter and then he overpaid by 30 billion, but he can save $200 million by not paying out the executives he bought it from. Some people are again calling this another 5D chess genius move. Here's what I think will happen based on what happened in an exactly the same situation when he bought Twitter. He will spend $200 million alone on legal fees <laughs> in this fucking battle and then he will end up having to pay them anyway because it turns out firing someone for cause when they are this level of an executive has very specific contractual rationale like it has to follow exactly specific <laughs> rules and he does not have that yet again here is uh the proofs in the pudding absolutely did not fire them for cause as you can easily tell by reading their employment agreements here is the definition of cause. Uh, you don't have to read this whole thing, but <laughs> uh, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time parsing that language here because Elon Musk doesn't care as we know from past experiences. <laughs> but did the fired Twitter executives do any of these things? Obviously not. Does Musk have any arguments that they did? Obviously not. Is he even pretending to have any relevant arguments? Obviously not. Will he eventually pay them their full severance? Obviously. Is this an ag exactly in every respect like his decision to ignore the merger agreement? Pretty much. <laughs> he's, he's playing some kind of chess. I don't know. 
but it does seem very likely that he is not going to be able to get away with not paying severance. That being said, that only applies to the executives who have very strict contracts. He is trying to fire many, many Twitter employees before their November vest. Uh, because in November, a bunch of Twitter employees receive stock grants. And now that he has agreed to buy every single outstanding share of Twitter for $54.20 a share, their stock grants vest at $54.20 value, which is actually a pretty nice chunk of change. And he has to pay them all. So he doesn't want to do that. So he is attempting to fire them all um, prior to that deadline and uh, force them to take uh, very little uh, severance. So we'll see how that goes. But he's going to be clearly in some legal battles. But to add on top of that, he is also claiming that uh, the legal team and the former Twitter board was hiding stuff from him. So he's opening a lawsuit against the board he just bought the company from. Now he's already paid for the company and there's no chance he can claw the money back. So I don't know what it, this is going to be a real clusterfuck. That's all I'm going to say. This is going to be a clusterfuck. Again, uh, I think the $20 idea is a little bit goofy, as does my man Stephen King. $20 a month to keep my blue check. Fuck that. They should pay me. If that gets instituted, I'm gone like Enron. <laughs> At which point I told him this may seem strange, but I have just the right hat for this situation. <laughs> but some will pay. It's the beginning of a process to make some money outside of advertisers. So we'll call that a half win, half fail. Let's get into some other news. Hey, here's a win. Let's talk about marketing a little bit. We're not just like Elon Musk. It's not an Elon Musk show. It's the Marketing Monday show. Here's a win. Subtlety. The lost art of subtlety in advertising. That's why I want to give a major win to this tasteful, down-to-earth, and most of all subtle Gillette ad. <laughs> the Razor Laser, baby! A giant 3D floating razor projected into the center of the stadium with exfoliating strip after it has been floating around. The firework, the green fireworks go off. It's actually kind of badass, to be honest. <laughs> I think memorable. I love there was a great tweet that was like marketing uh, executive responding to this, to seeing the draft of this. I love it. I love the idea. Can we just make the product pop a little more? Because that's the feedback you always get whenever you work on an ad. Uh, so anyway, I give that a dub. Uh, but in a fail, unfortunately, guys, the fail is uh, that you guys will have to do my ad watching for me. Because whether or not I choose to run ads on this stream, Amazon is going to get their due. Right now, experimental ads technology is being tested via Amazon Game Studio that will virtually insert ads in the game that are only visible to people watching the streamer. Look at this bad boy. <laughs> Wait, is that you it? See that on the house? Look at this. <laughs> So that, that is not like, okay, so I can't see that in my game, but on stream right now, you can see that. Look at that bad boy. Hey, dude. <laughs> I don't know. Cool. I don't know. Cool. But I do can't wait for it to be like a fucking, like while I'm playing God of War, I want like a, a Gillette Razor. I want Taco Bell to fly above. Yeah. I, <laughs> I want a background elf to jump in and slurp a Mountain Dew. That'd be awesome. That'd be badass, dude. Interesting indeed. Interesting development indeed. I'll give that a big fail. Here's a win. Ladies and gentlemen, if there's one type of gaming that we all love here, one category that speaks to us, it's speed running. Whether it's Hitman, whether it's GDQ, whether it's what Linkus does with Zelda, we love speedrunning. And that's why I wanna announce there's been a major breakthrough in the speedrun for fastest UK prime ministership. Okay? Yes, Liz Truss set the record recently with a 44 day faster than a head of lettuce term. But her replacement, Rishi Sunak, is right behind because in his first week on the job, there is already members of parliament drafting letters of no confidence. <laughs> He's on world record pace. Could he possibly beat Liz Truss's time? Liz Truss's time already insanely fast. Over twice as fast as George Canning in 1827. <laughs> Nobody has been anywhere close to her insane record and already the time is getting pushed. <laughs> the quest for the sub 45 UK prime minister position. Uh, so a lot going on in the UK. Now let's get to some fails. Uh, this is a spooky season after all. One Halloween night, <laughs> a monster long thought dead started to rise. First, it climbed and climbed and climbed until finally they put it under, <laughs> deep underground. 
And then, one Halloween night, it began to rise and emerge to the highest point it had ever been. I'm talking, of course, about credit card debt. <laughs> which is now at an all-time historical high. Every single person responding to rising inflation, rising costs, has apparently been taking on enormous amounts of credit card debt. That is the blue line here. The red line, that's people's savings, which are now at historic lows. This is truly, I mean, I'm taking a juggle. This is truly one of the most horrifying graphs I've seen. Some point, something's got to break, okay? Because as savings get lower and credit card debt gets higher, the payments on the credit card debt become impossible. And also, like, car payments are higher than ever. House payments are slightly beginning to fall, but are generally really high. Uh, eventually, <laughs> Halloween or no, this is going to lead to disaster. On Marketing Monday, non-joke answer, I would say, be very careful about credit card debt or any type of debt that you can that you can avoid. Again, do what you got to do. Is it 90% of that from Elon? <laughs> You think Elon bought Twitter on credit card? <laughs> Total credit card debt is actually up at, I believe 900, yeah, $930 billion, all time high. Yeah, so that's that's the fail, unfortunately, the spooky fail. But if you happen to be tracking your spending a little bit or worried about your spending, then I would suggest checking out today's sponsor, Rocket Money. Shout out to Rocket Money. Take full control of your subscriptions with Rocket Money. If you use Rocket Money, it will, uh, you link your accounts, it'll show you every single thing you're subscribed to. It does this automatically. It was an extremely easy one-step process. I was able to see that I've subscribed to like 14 things that I forgot I subscribed to. You can find everything you're subscribed to and just one click, remove it and cancel it. It also allows you to do things like set budget goals, you know, save up for something like a vacation or, or a car or whatever you want to and track your spending towards that. There is a paid version that does extra stuff like negotiate down your bills for like a little electric and cable and everything like that which is pretty cool so check it out rocketmoney.com slash hrock you can sign up now with your email address and get a download link thank you to rocket money for supporting marketing money continually and now let me uh let you know that there is one subscription i don't think you want to cancel or one other app you don't want to cancel and that my friends is uber let's give a big w to uber who has found something that their users really wanted okay because when i have the uber app usually i just do boring things like get cars when i'm at a bar and i'm drunk i need to get home lame you know what's cool if they use the user base of the app to push notify notify you of ads for other companies yes i love when uber makes money by using my phone that i gave them access to to give me push notifications to different companies ads uh apparently uber is in a real cash crunch right now and they are doing a lot of <laughs> questionable things like selling push notification ad space to make more money uh, in the short term as the economy is in a, in a downturn. Look forward to more great things from Uber like this. Your actual marketing win, billboards, they're all pretty cool. I think they're impressive. But what was cool about this one was that it, uh, <laughs> it combined two billboards at once for a cross map uh, shot, which I thought was pretty sick. So I gave it a thumbs up. I thought it was pretty clever. Uh, Riot's always trying new things, and I like that they uh, are consistently impressed me with, with like little fun things they do. There's been a bit of a, uh, a spur in innovation in billboards because they've realized that if they make a really cool billboard and they just take a video of it, it'll do better on social media than if they made a purely social video. I'm not sure <laughs> why particularly. It just does better. So really, this isn't even built for people to watch it in person. It's built to look cool. Pretty sick. Anyway, I give it a dub. We're gonna end the regular section with a win uh, with what I think is one of the greatest grussels of all time. How do you make $122 million easily from tech companies like Google and Facebook? That's right, you just ask. <laughs> because this man just sent them invoices over and over for different amounts. Between 2013 and 2015, he just kept sending fake bills and Google and Facebook, which are such big companies they can't keep track of all the different things they're buying, they just assumed they had to be paid. And the guy made $122 million. Unfortunately, he finally was caught and has agreed to forfeit $50 million and could face up to 30 years imprisonment. Which sounds to me, 450 million make 122 million. Feels like there's 70 million dollars floating out there. <laughs> so congrats to him. But unfortunately, that's all our wins and fails for the main league because we have actually a big section today. What are everybody's favorite section? Let's check in 
in the Far East. See what my man Xi Jinping has to say. What's up, Beijing? What's up, Beijing? This is actually the first week of the new third term of Xi Jinping. It was a spooky Halloween week for former leader Hu Jintao. This is the former leader who, who ran the country before him. This is Hu Jintao. For some reason, the file gets pulled away from him. He tries to get it back. He gets stopped. He signals to an aide. <laughs> he tries to get a final word in. And he's gone. Now, he has been reported as being unwell, and he is probably not in the best of health. But it was weird. It was a weird moment that's been covered by quite a bit of media because this is an extremely scripted event. And this is very public, and this was uh, broadcasted. This is not this is not this is something that happened out of the ordinary. Uh, again, there was some pushback from certain people in the Congress about him doing an unprecedented third term. I don't know exactly what happened, but the response from the market to this what was already assured third term has been dramatic. After that video was broadcast and the third term was 100% secure, every single Chinese stock in the United States had a massive, massive sell-off. <laughs> Uh, Tencent has lost $650 billion in value since early last year, but it has been, it's been one of the worst routes in Chinese stock market history. Thankfully though, China does not have to worry about no longer having a lot of foreign capital inflowing because a business consultant in China has recommended that if they just keep up zero COVID within 10 years, everyone else will basically die. <laughs> it was basically a TED talk style video where he said that long COVID will decimate everyone over 10 years. And as long as they queue up zero COVID, they don't have to worry about anyone else. <laughs> that's a win. I mean, that's a fail, but let me give you a win. Pretty cool moment in their space program. China has launched the third part, third and final part of the space station that they're building in order to eventually build a lunar facility and, and long-term stuff. Uh, they first did a satellite, then they did a manned space mission, and now they finally have uh, their own space station circling the planet. Uh, Chinese space program has been advancing rapidly. So yeah, we can get to some space wars eventually. <laughs> uh, but the real dub and the biggest dub and the one I want to talk about the most, you hate to see someone else live your dream. You know what I'm saying? And that's what happened to a bunch of citizens at Shanghai Disney who were forced to stay in the park because they couldn't procure a negative COVID test as the park shut. I am just jealous of these guys because what I found out is the people waiting for their freedom at Shanghai Disney can console themselves. Rides are continuing to operate for those trapped inside the happiest place on earth. They literally get to hang out in Shanghai Disney with no lines and infinite rides. Cutie Cinderella molding, dude. Absolute win, dude. The sudden nature of lockdowns of people fleeing shops, including a Shanghai branch of Ikea. Shoppers flee the attempt to lock down the store. Let's see this. That's crazy. Uh, yeah, anyway, uh, listen, COVID zero has been absolutely insane in China. And it is one of the policies that has gotten Xi the most pushback from his own populace. Almost everything else they're pretty happy with. Again, the economic growth and the increasing military might and all that. And it is something that they don't really have a great way to <laughs> handle because they can't really stop it without a better vaccine. And they can't really continue it without continuing to shut down factories, keep cities in lockdown. Uh, there's no real good path forward. I'm interested to see how it plays out. I really don't know what the exit plan is around COVID zero. Um, just let it run, baby. <laughs> we'll see. Ladies and gentlemen. That was Marketing Monday wins and fails for this past week. I hope you enjoyed this little update on the world of uh, marketing business and geopolitics. Check it, check it. Hey,